Father, Wikipedia Audio A father is the male parent of a child. Besides the paternal bonds of a father to his children, the father may have a parental, legal and social relationship with the child that carries with it certain rights and obligations. An adoptive father is a male who has become the child's parent through the legal process of adoption. A biological father is the male genetic contributor to the creation of the infant, through sexual intercourse or sperm donation. A biological father may have legal obligations to a child not raised by him, such as an obligation of monetary support. A putative father is a man whose biological relationship to a child is alleged but has not been established. A stepfather is a male who is the husband of a child's mother and they may form a family unit, but who generally does not have the legal rights and responsibilities of a parent in relation to the child. The adjective paternal refers to a father and comparatively to maternal for a mother. The verb to father means to procreate or to sire a child from which also derives the noun fathering. Biological fathers determine the sex of their child through a sperm cell which either contains an X chromosome, or Y chromosome. Related terms of endearment are dad, papa, papa, papacita, and pop. A male role model that children can look up to is sometimes referred to as a father figure. The paternity rights of a father with regard to his children differ widely from country to country often reflecting the level of involvement and roles expected by that society. Paternal Rights Parental leave is when a father takes time off to support his newly born or adopted baby. Paid paternity leave first began in Sweden in 1976 and is paid in more than half of European Union countries. In the case of male same-sex couples the law often makes no provision for either one or both fathers to take paternity leave. Fathers' rights movements such as Fathers for Justice argue that family courts are biased against fathers. Tukulti I, a Syrian king, was killed by his own son after sacking Babylon, Sennacherib, a Syrian king, was killed by two of his sons for his desecration of Babylon. King Kisapai, creator of the Sigiriya citadel of ancient Sri Lanka, killed his father King Dadasana for the throne. Emperor Yang of Sui in Chinese history allegedly killed his father, Emperor Wen of Sui, Beatrice Chenchi, Italian noblewoman who, according to legend, killed her father after he imprisoned and raped her. She was condemned and beheaded for the crime along with her brother and her stepmother in 1599. Lizzie Borden allegedly killed her father and her stepmother with an axe in Fall River, Massachusetts, in 1892. She was acquitted, but her innocence is still disputed. Eosasai of Ethiopia one of the great warrior emperors of Ethiopia, was deposed by his son Tekel Hamanot in 1706 and subsequently assassinated. Child support is an ongoing periodic payment made by one parent to the other, it is normally paid by the parent who does not have custody. An estimated 2% of British fathers experiences paternity fraud during a non-paternity event, bringing up a child they wrongly believe to be their biological offspring. In almost all cultures fathers are regarded as secondary caregivers. This perception is slowly changing with more and more fathers becoming primary caregivers, while mothers go to work or in single parenting situations, male same-sex parenting couples. In the West, the image of the married father as the primary wage earner is changing. The social context of fatherhood plays an important part in the well-being of men and all their children. In the United States 16% of single parents were men as of 2013. 
Involved fathers offer developmentally specific provisions to their children and are impacted themselves by doing so. Active father figures may play a role in reducing behavior and psychological problems in young adults. An increased amount of father-child involvement may help increase a child's social stability, educational achievement, and their potential to have a solid marriage as an adult. Their children may also be more curious about the world around them and develop greater problem-solving skills. Children who were raised with fathers perceive themselves to be more cognitively and physically competent than their peers without a father. Mothers raising children together with a father reported less severe disputes with their child. Cho Izawa murdered her own father who had been raping her for 15 years, on October 5, 1968, in Japan. The incident changed the criminal code of Japan regarding patricide, Kip Kinkle, an Oregon boy who was convicted of killing his parents at home and two fellow students at school on May 20, 1998, Sarah Marie Johnson, an Idaho girl who was convicted of killing both parents on the morning of September 2, 2003, Dipendra of Nepal reportedly massacred much of his family at a royal dinner on June 1, 2001 including his father King Birendra, mother, brother, and sister, Christopher Porco, was convicted. On August 10, 2006, of the murder of his father and attempted murder of his mother with an axe. The father figure is not always a child's biological father and some children will have a biological father as well as a step or nurturing father. When a child is conceived through sperm donation, the donor will be the biological father of the child. Fatherhood as legitimate identity can be dependent on domestic factors and behaviors. For example, a study of the relationship between fathers, their sons, and home computers found that the construction of fatherhood and masculinity required that fathers display computer expertise. Darwin's frog fathers carry eggs in the vocal pouch. Most male waterfowls are very protective in raising their offspring, sharing scout duties with the female. Examples are the geese, swans, gulls, loons, and a few species of ducks. When the families of most of these waterfowls travel, they usually travel in a line and the fathers are usually the ones guarding the offspring at the end of the line while the mothers lead the way, the female seahorse deposits eggs into the pouch on the male's abdomen. The male releases sperm into the pouch, fertilizing the eggs. The embryos develop within the male's pouch, nourished by their individual yolk sacs, male catfish keep their eggs in their mouth foregoing eating until they hatch, male emperor penguins alone incubate their eggs, females do no incubation. Rather than building a nest, each male protects his egg by balancing it on the tops of his feet, enclosed in a special brood pouch. Once the eggs are hatched however, the females will rejoin the family, Male beavers secure their offspring along with the females during their first few hours of their lives. As the young beavers mature, their fathers will teach them how to search for materials to build and repair their own dams, before they disperse to find their own mates. Wolf fathers help feed, protect, and play with their pups. In some cases, several generations of wolves live in the pack giving pups the care of grandparents, aunts-slash-uncles, and siblings, in addition to parents. The father wolf is also the one who does most of the hunting when the females are securing their newborn pups. Coyotes are monogamous and male coyotes hunt and bring food to their young. Dolphin fathers help in the care of the young. Newborns are held on the surface of the water by both parents until they are ready to swim on their own. A number of bird species have active, caring fathers who assist the mothers, 
such as the waterfowls mentioned above, apart from humans, fathers and few primate species care for their young. Those that do are tamarins and marmosets. Particularly strong care is also shown by Siamangs where fathers carry infants after their second year. In TT and owl monkeys fathers carry their infants 90% of the time with TT monkey infants developing a preference for their fathers over their mothers. Silverback gorillas have less role in the families but most of them serve as an extra protecting the families from harm and sometimes approaching enemies to distract them so that his family can escape unnoticed. Role of the Father Roman law defined fatherhood as mater semper certa, pater est quem nuptia demonstrant mother is always certain, the father is whom the marriage vows indicate. The recent emergence of accurate scientific testing, particularly DNA testing, has resulted in the family law relating to fatherhood experiencing rapid changes. The link between sexual acts and procreation can be empirically identified, but is not immediately evident. Conception cannot be directly observed, whereas birth is obvious. The extended time between the two events makes it difficult to establish the link between them. It is theorized that some cultures have ignored that males impregnate females. Procreation was sometimes even considered to be an autonomous ability of women, men were essential to ensure the survival and defense of the social group, but only women could enhance and reintegrate it through their ability to create new individuals. This gave women a role of primary and indisputable importance within their social groups. This situation may have persisted throughout the Paleolithic Age. Some scholars assert that Venus figurines are evidence of this. During the transition to the Neolithic Age, agriculture and cattle breeding became the core activities of a growing number of human communities. Breeding, in particular, is likely to have led women who used to spend more time than men taking care of the cattle to gradually discover the procreative effect of the sexual act between a male and a female. For communities which looked at sexuality as simply a source of pleasure and an element of social cohesion, without any taboo character, this discovery must have led to some disruption. This would impact not only regulation of sexuality, but the whole political, social, and economic system. The shift in understanding would have necessarily taken a long time, but this would not have prevented the implications being relatively dramatic. Eventually, these implications led to the model of society which in different times and shapes was adopted by most human cultures. Traditionally, Caring for children is predominantly the domain of mothers, whereas fathers in many societies provide for the family as a whole. Since the 1950s, social scientists and feminists have increasingly challenged gender roles, including that of the male breadwinner. Policies are increasingly targeting fatherhood as a tool of changing gender relations. Fatherhood in Canada during the interwar period was a time of imposed change, led by state and expert advisement. A response to the impact of World War I on the male population, the Canadian government and citizens attempted to establish a normalcy of the family model which consisted of the stay-at-home mother and the breadwinner father as the ideal parental model. The challenge of this established normalcy was that few Canadians outside of the urban middle class had ever seen this model in their households. Also, advice that was given to fathers at this time without sufficient recommendations on how to implement the standards of good fatherhood. Furthermore, expectations on fathers, and the actual practices of fathers were often different. World War I's impact on fathers and fathers-to-be was devastating. Approximately 650,000 Canadian men served in the armed forces, 
and approximately 60,000 were killed, with another 60,000 bearing physical disabilities as a result of injuries. In this time period, very few programs or systems of support existed to help soldiers returning home. Because of this, many survivors of the war turned to drinking, distanced themselves from their families and lashed out at loved ones. Determination of Parenthood History of Fatherhood In response to this, government, academic and private institutions brought in experts in medicine, psychology, social work and education with the purpose of establishing a standard of good fathering. This advice was tailored to Anglo-Canadian working-class fathers, but was not written exclusively for them. According to these experts, a father was someone who was the main economic provider of the family, athletic, moral, devoted a portion of his time to his children and was a good husband to his wife. The expectation for fathers' roles in the lives of their children was to be the authoritative figure of the household who showed love to his family by devoting the majority of his efforts to working and providing financially. A good father was also deemed to be someone who would bring other experts into the process of child-rearing, including doctors, nurses, social workers and teachers. A male bear leaves the female shortly after mating and will kill and sometimes eat any bear cub he comes across, even if the cub is his. Bear mothers spend much of their cub's early life protecting them from males, domesticated dog fathers show little interest in their offspring, and unlike wolves, are not monogamous with their mates and are thus likely to leave them after mating, male lions will tolerate cubs but only allow them to eat meat from dead prey after they have had their fill. A few are quite cruel towards their young and may hurt or kill them with little provocation. A male who kills another male to take control of his pride will also usually kill any cubs belonging to that competing male. However, it is also the males who are responsible for guarding the pride while the females hunt. However the male lions are the only felines that actually have a role in fatherhood, male rabbits generally tolerate kits but unlike the females, they often show little interest in the kits and are known to play rough with their offspring when they are mature, especially towards their sons. This behavior may also be part of an instinct to drive the young males away to prevent incest matings between the siblings. The females will eventually disperse from the warren as soon as they mature but the father does not drive them off like he normally does to the males. Horse stallions and pig boars have little to no role in parenting, nor are they monogamous with their mates. They will tolerate young to a certain extent, but due to their aggressive male nature, they are generally annoyed by the energetic exuberance of the young, and may hurt or even kill the young. Thus, stud stallions and boars are not kept in the same pen as their young or other females. Canadian Fatherhood in the Interwar Era Patricide Terminology Biological Fathers Non-biological Fathers were also expected to devote a period of time towards their children. Fathers were recommended to spend one hour per week with their sons. Most advice was directed towards the relationship between a father and his son, which encouraged temperance of a father's response to questions and spending time with boys playing with and coaching them in sports. This amount of time was recognized to be short, but it was deemed better than not spending time with their children at all. Many labor organizations also argued for shorter work weeks as a means of increasing family time, for working class fathers. Many fathers were unable to increase time spent with their children though due to long work days and work weeks. This is true for most insects, reptiles, and fish. 
Although expectations were high for fathers to be the breadwinners for their family, the economic nature of Canada and lack of support often led to differing results. The job market in the Great Depression often did not allow for fathers to provide for their families on a single income and receiving government assistance was seen as a personal failure by many fathers. Since the identity of a father was so rooted in his ability to match the breadwinner model, the inability for a father to provide financially meant that many fathers' identities as successful members of the family were challenged. Also, although there was an expectation that fathers should be more gentle and temperate towards their children, fathers were often feared by their children. In early human history there have been notable instances of patricide. For example, fatherhood defined by contact level. In more contemporary history there have also been instances of father-offspring conflicts, such as For some animals, it is the fathers who take care of the young. Many species, though, display little or no paternal role in caring for offspring. The male leaves the female soon after mating and long before any offspring are born. It is the females who must do all the work of caring for the young. Finally, in some species neither the father nor the mother provides any care. Non-Human Fatherhood Bibliography